Now, when you cut chicken for stew, I will remove that wishbone. You have here. We'll remove this. And now to separate the chicken, one of the mistakes is to try to cut here. Use the weight of the chicken. Like for example, I have the weight of the chicken here. If I cut with the point of a knife, look what happened. That's it. You know, there is nothing really holding it, except in the back now, that little thing that we call the oyster here. So I will go with my knife and cut that oyster. Now to open the leg, one of the mistakes is to extend the leg too much and it's hard to open. You have to bring that bone parallel to the carcass, grab it at the knee, and then it will crack open easily. You cut through the sinew, there is a large sinew here, you pull out, and that's it. The other leg, again, cut this way, oyster, bring it back, to cut it at the, at, the, at the sinew and pull out. Now I have the whole breast, which is very large. If I want to separate it in two, I have to cut around the sternum here, which is the central bone. On one side, actually, and on the other side, here it is, this side, and this side. I will put the chicken on its side. I know that there is an articulation right there. So I will go into that articulation here with my knife. If I don't find it, I jiggle a little bit to slide into the articulation. At that point, I hold the chicken with my knife and I pull out. One breast, same thing on the other side. Again, the articulation is right there. So I will cut to go into the articulation. Hold it, pull out. As you can see here, I have left the two fillets. Now I run my finger to remove that fillet there and that fillet here. And this is the whole carcass of the chicken. I've cut at the joint here, the joint here, the joint here, and the joint there. That's the fourth place where I have cut. This, usually, we cut the end of it. Could be this. This is a chicken for stew for four people. Four or more. Big breast. The fillet are left to cook with the breast, but more at the last moment because they are tender. And then the, the, the leg is usually cut at, at the joint between the drumstick and the thigh bone. By cutting this, it makes it shrink so that as it starts cooking, it's going to shrink there and the bone will show. When. This is the chicken for stew. Now with this, what you can do here, and after the articulation here, trim the side. I do the same thing in the other one here and there. And I will use this. Now I put that on the side, those two bones are here. I will go with the over my hand, push down on those bones, push down on this, do the same thing on the other side, push down on the bone here, push down on this one, that's why you want to be after the articulation. So those bones are now loose. I can remove them, again with my towel, here, and then, so those two bones are out. If you have the opening here of this, you can have a garnish of uh, anything, meat or whatever. You may want to stuff it a little bit, 
with a kind of meatball or whatever you have, and that make like little balloon. And then you can poach those or you can stew those. Okay, so we have now the little balloon, or the ch little chicken balloon. We can do what we call lollipops. You, you grab this here with a towel, TV with a towel, so that it's straight this way. Put your hand there and break it down at the joint. Put your thumb in the back and pull. Those two bones will stick out. You remove the hand there that you use for stuck. Using your towel, you remove one of the two bones, the small one, usually, and you're left with one bone, and this, you pull this out a little bit to turn it inside out to do what we call a lollipop, like this, that you can fry, or there is a different way of using it. It's often that a recipe asks you to stuff a leg of chicken, and often you buy it this way at the supermarket. But the way to do it is really to follow the bone. There is a thigh bone here, and there is the articulation, and then there is the bone of the drumstick. So you follow the bone on each side. This one, as you can see, after you go on each side, you could actually slide your knife underneath, scrape it a little bit, and then here, of course, you have to go around the articulation. Because here you have the knee around it, which is what I'm doing now. And now that I'm around the articulation, I can scrape it again. And I can actually leave the bone, take the bone out. Usually we take the bone out. So here is the leg of uh, chicken flap. And uh, whatever stuffing you have in it, let's say some ground meat or whatever you may have, then you roll it on itself very tight, as tight as you can. And often in terms of uh, cooking, what I do, I use a piece of plastic wrap on top. Get it really tight here, around, roll it like a sausage. And often I put that in a piece of aluminum foil, and that goes into the oven, seasoning. Put into the oven, and after 15, 20 minutes of cooking, it's hard enough, halfway cooked, I can remove the aluminum foil and this and continue roasting it. You know, grilling or broiling a chicken usually goes faster than the roasting. And this is the way I do it. Usually I take the end here of those, uh, of the drumstick. You can of course do them with your knife, with this. I fold the wing underneath, and I split it in half. It takes half of the time now to roast. Now, I go on, see on each side of the neck here, with the point of a knife, I go through. If you feel you're not proficient enough with the knife, then use one of those to cut, and I'm going to cut on the other side here. Okay, that's kept for stuck. Now the secret of this, if there is a secret, is this. I really press it to have it. There is always the place where it doesn't cook completely, at the joint here. So what do I do? I do a little incision right in the joint. Same thing on the other side here, in the joint. The second place where you look that it's never cooked enough is between the drumstick and the thigh. Same idea here. I cut a little bit in between. You won't even see it. I do the same thing for a turkey when I cook it like that so the breast is not overcooked and the heat has the time to go there and it's not red at the joint here. It's great to grill or to broil the chicken this way. You can brush the top with mustard, honey, ketchup, Tabasco, a mixture of all of those to make a beautiful hot crust, and it's a great way of doing it.